I love Comic Con so much. It's really the reward for all your hard work, right? And to see the people face to face, oh, I love you so much. Who um, enjoy the show, it just reinforces all why you've worked so hard at 3 a.m. So, remind me that I said that. If we go again, I'll be like, oh. I have the audio. Okay, good. Thank you. Any uh, funny comments or fans? Oh, a million. We had, an, we had our first signing yesterday, and there was a couple that was coming through the lineup, and the first girl had a poster, and the second girl had a tiny box that we were all signing. We're like, what is this? And she's like, it's a present for her. So Mel and I were at the very end, and then we were like, is it, what is, what is, what is, what is, like, you don't want to, so she's like, okay, you've all signed it. She proposed to her girlfriend. She got down on one knee and proposed. I like bald. I'm very tired. Um, but it, and the girlfriend was super surprised. It was so amazing. So that was pretty unique. Uh, I mean, really, what's a more romantic place on earth than the Winona Earp signing uh, line, though? But it was pretty incredible. Yeah, people we are back at the live stream. Exactly. We and um, we did something really fun too. We're really known for our live tweets on the show yes. every Friday night. We all got together. So there was a group of fans who were meeting at a hotel to live tweet. So all the cast and I showed up and we live tweeted with them. Yeah. So that Amazing. was pretty fun. So it's just, it was really fun, though. We love them. We're not very cool. We uh, kind of wear our hearts on our sleeves. We really love our fandom, and we wouldn't be here without that fandom. So. So going back to this, where you mentioned this fight at this wedding, how does things kind of like in real life with family dynamics kind of inform anything on the show, if at all? Because I mean, I know and Waverly are very, very, very tight and yeah. they're very supportive of each other, but sometimes they do um, fight Disagree. as sisters do. Yeah. Like, so is there sometimes, you know, things that might have happened with somebody family-wise that you know that you kind of put that spin on, or do you keep it completely out? Or um, I mean, it's hard personal stuff always influences your work, right? The truth is I actually don't have a sister. I have a mother, but I always wanted a sister. Um, and when they brought me the comic book, I have a little girl. I had just watched Frozen like 75,000 times. Um, honestly, if I hear that song one more time, I'm going to get like PS PTSD in a rush. But um, I was really struck and moved by the fact that the real romance in that movie is the sisters, right? They kind of save each other. So I was quite intrigued by the idea of sisters in the comic book. And what I like the best is the idea that Waverly really wants to be the chosen one, and Winona wants to be Waverly and be liked by everybody and would rather die than be the chosen one. So I think it's interesting that they love each other, but they also both have what the other wants, so to speak. Um, and also, they've been apart for years. I mean, they don't know each other. So it's just so rich. Like, I could tell that story for 20 years, right? I think sister stories don't get enough play. Um, and you know, genre is the home of like building your own family, right? I think we've seen that time and time again from Buffy to Purple Star the idea that like you can't choose your family but you can build a family of your own and we certainly strive to do that on the show with this you know with Doc Holliday a dragon you know an amazing gay cop and uh, what have you your typical family so to speak but uh, yeah, yeah. 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 What kind of did you have before you started writing the show and doing your thing with the show? Were there shows or books that you kind of draw from as inspiration? Um, yeah, tons. I mean, everything goes back to Buffy for me a little bit, just as far as like. Just, I just think it was so incredible what Joss and Co. were able to do at that time. And you know what else really stays with me from that show? is like we are a small underdog Canadian show. We probably have like Game of Thrones hat budget, like, you know, like for the whole show. <laughs> but like Buffy, and you're like, there are no hats. And I'm like, that's my point. Um, <laughs> but like Buffy, even now you watch it and like, you know, you can see the zipper of the demon's back, but the heart and the emotions and the relationship the characters are so true and so earned that like the audience doesn't care and when I get nervous about special effects or stuff like that I'm like no if it still comes back to like what's honest and real and moving that's kind of really important to me so yeah oh back during season one I, I I interviewed you I was from Fangirlish I interviewed you and you were talking love about it. oh thank you <laughs> unless you're gone then I hate no, no I'm just kidding I love you no, no, I'm just um kidding. and you mentioned that Winona felt like your ugly baby that oh, you just I know. absolutely <laughs> how do you feel about your ugly baby now being in season two oh. being in comic-con like Amazing. Like, the truth is, Winona is a really hard sell, right? Like, it's a crazy title. 
it's kind of weird. Wyatt Earp is like the most iconic American legend ever, but it's like a Canadian show. Like, and we were really running around the woods first season in the middle of Alberta. We were like, is there even film in the camera? Like, we're doing all these skits. It was just such a crazy show. I was really proud of it, but I did think this definitely has a specific tone. I don't know if anyone's going to watch it. This has been, I'm tired enough, I will cry. This has been beyond my wildest dreams. Just the passion of the fan base, um, how they've adopted it and they get it, and they understand what we're trying to do and what we stand for. Um, it's a dream come true. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned Buffy being a big influence. Uh, I definitely noticed a lot of season two, like the villains and stuff, that oh, yeah. Buffy-esque. Um, what goes into like creating those types, like the, the the widows and the spiders and all that stuff? Like, do, you, right. do you look at old stuff like Buffy and try to get inspiration? You know what? Yes, I think less Buffy because I really do. I'm so honest about my love of Buffy. I really try not to be. I try to be um, respectfully imitative versus derivative. Right? Um, you can tell me later if I succeeded or didn't. It's honestly budget. Like, what can you do on the budget? So anything humanoid is just better than like the Demi Gorgon from Strange things right that would be again our whole budget so you end up using a lot of the same tropes and also like a good scary spider story is just a good horror movie material right everybody hates spiders not everybody not everybody but like it's a good cheap fun creature of the week so to speak um the widows we definitely built backwards because they're going somewhere and they're very important characters so um so any um any homage is just that but i think a lot of it is just common um genre tropes and a lot of that comes from both comics too like really Winona is a monster squad hunter so every type of creature appears in the comics werewolves vampires zombies but with a twist so thank you so much guys thank Enjoy you the past, okay? bye, bye.